I think we're probably getting a panic mode at this point. Just to put in perspective, if we keep falling at this rate, Shauna, uh, you know, we're going to be at zero in nine days. So if it goes to zero in nine days, we can own all the infrastructure, all the inventory, cash flows, real estate that the biggest blue chip companies own. Um, so my point here is, you know, there's got to be some value here. Things are getting very, very cheap. So I think at this point, it's just whether it's margin calls, people can't take it anymore. I mean, this is indicative of just pure panic selling where fundamentals are just being thrown out the windows at this point. So then, Ryan, what should investors do at this point? I mean, I'm, it's unlikely that we will go to zero in nine days, but you do make a good point just at the rate that we have seen stocks selling off. Obviously, there is so much panic out there and investors simply don't know what to do at this point. Well, I think first, up at this point, it's just hard to do, but don't panic. Um, this is my third bear market, and they all feel a little bit the same in terms of how the panic feels and how, um, you know, the, the forecast where nobody knows what's going to happen next. So I think at this point, the worst thing you can do is actually panic. Now, on the other side of the equation, if you're a long-term investor, like our portfolios, where we have bonds, and we have other things in there, I would argue here is probably not a bad place to be dollar cost averaging. You're looking at yields now that are just so much more attractive than the bond market that if you think about a long-term, and dividend yields still may even go up this year based on some of the projections I've seen on the S&P, um, it's probably not a bad place to actually be dollar cost averaging into the market for the long-term. Yeah, right. I mean, when we talk about dollar cost averaging, there, there are some concerns, even if you are doing that, and it's a smart strategy, that some of these sectors have been hit so hard, and you're talking about all the fundamentals getting thrown out of the, out of the window here. Restaurants, I mean, when we look at those, uh, it's nuts to see a 30% move to the downside day after day. Darn and restaurants uh, among the hardest hit, even though it's it's among some of the best well-capitalized restaurants out there. So when we're talking about some of these names, are you saying just avoid those that have been hit so hard? Uh, would you look at maybe some of these other things, consumer staples, Walmart, even getting an upgrade out there uh, and performing well among all this? Yeah, Zach, that's a good point. So my recommendation here is I think it's what's really smart here is I think we don't know what industries, we don't know what sectors are going to do the best when we rebound. But what I think is happening right now is really smart CEOs that are well capitalized, they're taking advantage of this. You know, anyone who's going to go bankrupt right now, that demand is going to go to those companies that are in the best shape right now. So I think indexing is your best bet right now, because when the smoke settles, we're going to find out what companies are making the best moves right now. And the thing about indexing is it's capital capitalization weighted. So the cream's going to rise to the top. So I think trying to figure out which individual stocks here are going to be the best. I think that's kind of a fool's earn right now because you don't know. But I can tell you, even just the CEOs that I work with, they're my clients and presidents of companies are literally making proactive moves right now. And they're looking to get aggressive here on the buying side with other companies and things like that. So I think being diversified here is really critical. And Picking individual stocks here might be, yeah. You know, I don't think that's the way to go. Uh, Ryan, you know, let me challenge you on that a, a bit because, um, I mean, these these numbers that we are getting uh, from these industries. You know, I just got off the call with the National Restaurant Association. They said they're looking at a two hundred twenty five billion dollar loss over the next three months. I mean, that is a significant number to digest here. And I keep hearing, you know, don't panic. Don't just jump in. Don't just jump out. But I'm wondering as an investor, how long term should we be thinking at this point? Because it seems like, you know, we need to kind of take a deep breath and maybe pause to see, well, how far out should we be looking in terms of our investment case, given all these scary numbers that are coming in right now? Well, first off, um, as a stock investor, for my clients, I mean, your time horizon stock should always be 10 years out. Um, in the short term, as you can see, these things happen along the way that you can't anticipate ahead of time. I don't have an analyst or economist that I found that predicted this at the beginning of the year. I don't know about you. Um, so I think you know, your time horizon has to be longer. But I will say here, remember, this is a lot of pent up demand for later. It's not like the financial crisis where demand just evaporated, right? You know, a lot of this demand is just getting pent up for later. So my guess is when this thing recovers, um, and it could be a lot quicker than you think, I mean, it could be like the turn of a dime and all of a sudden the rally comes and you know, a lot of these losses that we're seeing now at the bottom here, or if this is the bottom, they're going to get recovered very, very quickly. And you can't really anticipate that ahead of time. So sitting in cash, um, my experience in the last two bear markets I was in, you missed the boat. So I think it's really dangerous to go to cash and say, I'm just going to wait because man, this thing can turn quickly. Ryan, in talking about investor panic, so we're talking about multi-billion dollar stimulus packages from governments around the world, in Europe and in the US, the White House proposing more than a trillion. Will that have any effect in calming investors? Or is the only thing that's gonna really matter is for the number of coronavirus cases to stall or peak, and that's when we're gonna see some calm? 
All right, Sabil, that's a great point. And I think this is another thing to think about. And this is my experience with other bear markets is the market is going to recover before the news gets better. So if you're sitting around waiting to find out what those numbers look like next week and the week after, again, what happens is the market right now is discounting things way ahead of you know, where we are with the, the number of cases and things like that. So realistically, the market's going to start to recover before that news actually gets better. So I, I warn you here, just be waiting for the news to get better. At that point, it's usually too late to make the kind of moves you can get, take advantage of these like just you know bottom barrel prices that we have right now. All right, Ryan Payne of Payne Capital Management, thanks so much for joining us today.